Hey everybody, it's Tom here, and what you're looking at is something quite special. This is Mario Galaxy running on an NVIDIA Shield, and to talk about it is Richard Ledbetter. Hello there, Tom. How's it all going? Yeah, pretty good. I've just got this uh, yesterday, and there's a couple of things we should cover. Well, Nintendo don't usually give away their key franchises to another platform. I mean, not for a long time. The origins of this were a bit of a mystery until we got it into the office. Uh, but it definitely turns out this is, yes, an official version of Mario Galaxy. It's got the Nintendo logo at the start, and also, curiously, the NVIDIA Lightspeed logo as well to go with it. Yeah, it's a curious one, this. First of all, we've got to explain exactly what we're seeing here, which is that it is an emulator. We have confirmed that it's not a port. It is an emulator running on the Tegra X1 chipset, which is significant because it's exactly the same processor that's inside the Switch. So we've got a Nintendo IP here running on an NVIDIA platform that is actually using the same processor as a Nintendo console. So yeah, you know, we can kind of infer from that that maybe there's more to this than meets the eye. But first of all, we've got to stress that if you have a US or UK or European Shield, you aren't able to access this content. Now in theory, possibly you could go to NVIDIA's GitHub, download the Chinese flash ROM for your Shield, and flash it and then gain access to the store. But even then you're gonna need a VPN in order to access the content. And we tried it, it was a complete disaster. So we actually ended up importing a Chinese shield to get a look at this because it is significant. It is an official Nintendo emulator, uh, clearly developed by Nvidia's in-house development team. And well, here it is, and it is quite special, I think, in many ways. Yeah, this is NVIDIA Lightspeed, so they're the studio uh, usually behind PC ports to Shield, so they've obviously been contracted to help this along. And, you know, this is pure speculation, but I think it is, you know, two big companies scratching each other's backs in terms of the Switch gets the Tegra X1 chip, and NVIDIA gets a, a handful of Nintendo games. There's also Zelda, Twilight Princess, and a few others, uh, two others in there as well, which we'll be covering later. But yeah, it does raise the question of quality when it comes to actually booting the game up, because you're wondering, does this actually have the Nintendo seal of quality about it? Does it have that air of, you know, you know, performance and polish and you know from the off I think it really does I mean it's all in Chinese even selecting the uh, English native language option in the shield settings this game still boots with uh, Chinese calligraphy all across it but obviously it's still very playable it's Mario you can't really go too far wrong there it's really interesting to note how well this is all kind of translated though. Everything, including the controller buttons from the uh, Shield controller, are kind of planted in there. I mean, this is a Wii game, so you know, you had just one uh, hand on the nunchuck and the other on the Wii remote, and you kind of had to shake to get Mario to do the spin attack. And obviously there was a little bit of second player functionality in there with the um, collecting the gems by pointing at the screen. So those two things have been adapted to a more traditional 360 pad layout, which is kind of interesting. Probably more interesting is the fact that typically Nintendo don't actually run their emulation on the virtual console at anything other than native resolution. Uh, maybe there are one or two exceptions, but typically it's native resolution. Well, what's curious here, obviously, is that we're getting a massive resolution bump. Now, when you look at the NVIDIA portal on the Chinese website, it says native 1080p. Now, obviously, we've got a super crisp presentation here but it's not 1080p, is it? No, actually, it's a weird one. It's actually super sampling down on one axis alone. It is 1920 by 1404, but uh, you may notice there's a border at the top and bottom, which adds up to about 30 pixels. So uh, call that 1920 by 1374. But either way, yeah, there's definitely some logic of scaling going on from the original resolution of the Wii version. Right, okay, so if we look at the x-axis, 1920 is a straight three times resolution increase, and I guess it's the same on the y. Yeah, so it would be by that 640 by 468, I guess is what they took as the original native, and uh, it goes right up three times on each axis. So if you've ever used an emulator like Dolphin that uh, follows a similar logic there, and it's exactly what you get here. And oh, no anti-aliasing whatsoever. So you see those pixels large and proud. 
<laughs> well, yeah, uh, a bit smaller than they were on the original, though, thankfully. I mean, I think from my perspective, uh, a couple of things here. I think the game looks amazing. <laughs> I mean, we've looked at Nintendo emulation before and we've always said it's not so much the amount of pixels that's the issue here, more the quality of the original design. And when you give that Nintendo artwork a larger canvas to work with, Typically, it just looks glorious. And I think, yeah, obviously it is a game of its time here, but you just can't really argue with the results here. It looks so much better than the original. Oh, definitely, yeah. Generally speaking, it looks crisp and beautiful. I, I actually quite like the raw pixels of, uh, you know, Nintendo games usually. And it reminds me a lot of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in that way, you know. I don't really have many complaints because it all looks so smooth. There's something to be said for a game running at 60 FPS and the fact it's moving so quickly, it kind of does help a little bit with uh, hiding the raw edges, even if there's no anti-aliasing. So, yeah, that, that's all in there. One thing I did mention to you earlier is the state of the pre-rendered stuff. Right, yes. <laughs> it's not so good, is it? I mean, there's only so far you could go, really, without having to re-render all those, but yeah, it, there's a, a whole bunch of CG sort of cutscenes in there you may not have realised was actually there, but they're all running at 480p. It looks seamless when you're running on the Wii version, because, you know, the whole game runs at 480p, but now it just looks kind of compressed and low quality. Yeah, that's really the most, well, one of the more unpolished parts of this package. Bit of a shame, but there are only a handful right at the start, and as if you play the game, you'll know the rest of the game kind of unfolds more or less pure gameplay, so I'm not too uh, upset about that. Yeah, I mean, and I guess also it categorically proves that it's an emulation, not a remaster in any way, shape or form. But one thing I find curious is that if we've got this three times resolution increase on each axis, well then that's a nine times resolution in total. So it is actually doing what the Xbox One X enhanced titles are doing for Xbox 360 here, which I find is fascinating. But you were saying also that Dolphin uh, uses a similar integer based form of scaling. It does it to a higher level there, so I actually captured some footage on Dolphin uh, just for comparison's sake, and yeah, definitely you can see these are two very similar images, you know? Uh, actually, I don't think Dolphin comes across as polished overall because in this shield version you get some button prompts and other UI elements are actually properly native 1080p but yeah definitely there are fonts and parts of the image that are much uh, crisper than you get in an unofficial emulator so yeah again I'm kind of uh, reminded of the Xbox One X enhanced titles where fonts that we presume are vector based are actually scaling in line with resolution and look native, whereas the bitmaps, which are kind of, you know, straight standard 2D art, aren't. So there is that kind of weird mishmash there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we should talk about how this game uh, controls as well, because I have touched on it, but yeah, I mean, when you're playing the game, you may notice in the footage, I am struggling a little bit, especially with uh, what you'd usually use for the uh, sort of the Wii pointer. So y there are some sections where you're tasked with pointing at a star to gravitate towards it and you pull Mario in that direction. And I had to finish a level this way and it was a real struggle because that's all mapped to the right analog stick on this shield controller. And it's, you know, it's the logical place you put it and to be fair, it works reasonably well. But when you're tasked with doing these very precise motions and pointing at these very small points on the screen, it's actually quite a task. I couldn't quite get it to work so fluidly. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get used to it. And the other thing is collecting the gems as well. It's nowhere near as accurate as a Wii pointer could ever be. It's just a bit of a shame. I mean, that's curious because obviously if this emulator is going to be repurposed in any way for the Switch, we're going to have the same issues there because uh, the Switch doesn't have uh, the pointing mechanics. Well, I guess it does. It has an IR remote on one of the uh, Joy-Cons. It does, so I guess we've not really had any games to support that, I believe. I'm, I may be wrong, but we would presumably need a IR receiver on top of the TV, similar to Wii, to make that work. Yeah, I think it might work without it, actually, but I guess we'd have to see. We'd have to actually see it because we've never actually seen an implementation of it. Run. Yeah. Yeah, it's uncharted territory, really. I suppose the one other big point we should touch on is the state of performance in this game. Now, here's the thing, right? NVIDIA Lightspeed... They've got some pretty talented developers there, but the issue is that none of the Android ports we've seen, uh, perhaps with the exception of Doom 3 BFG, have kind of really hit the mark, bearing in mind 
what we know the chipset is capable of because we've seen it on Switch. So, you know, a lot of the games are lacking features compared to the Xbox 360 or PC versions, and the performance in many cases is subpar. And yeah, I mean, there's a sense really, bearing in mind that NVIDIA are fully in control of the drivers, they know their own chipset, there's a sense that performance is lacking here in the light speed titles, in many of them at least. And there's a similar situation here. The goal really is 60 FPS, and that's always been very polished in every Mario game, pretty much. But in this case, it does feel like Nintendo's standards of uh, uh, quality for a Nintendo branded game are slipping. You'll notice in the footage here that, you know, you're getting micro stutters, nothing major, but it's a constant sort of one frame drop or couple in a row, especially as you're traveling quickly between planets. So I could feel it as I was playing it. It's not a big bother, but it does make me think this isn't, you know, how Nintendo would have uh, produced it. It does make remind me that this is emulation in a way with a couple of the polishing issues that comes with usually. Yeah, I'm a, a little bit disappointed on that front. The frame time spikes kind of get worse when you're flying between planets. And bear in mind, I tried to fix this as well by running it on the Shield's high performance mode, but I am guessing that there's a lot of uh, baggage as well in the, the running of the Shield OS and a whole bunch of other background processes. So presumably running on the Switch, you know, this may help if it ever does come to Switch. Well, there's a few discussion points there. First of all, the performance side of things. Android is kind of notorious for getting in the way <laughs> in terms of performance and famously uh, you know John Carmack was talking about the struggles he's had working with Gear VR on Android and how it wasn't able to lock to 60 hertz even though there didn't seem to be any particular reason why the code couldn't run and as I said Nvidia Lightspeed do know what they're doing at the same time a lot of the ports that we've seen yeah I mean we've proved categorically on the switch that Tegra X1 even with reduced clocks can easily best the Wii U and indeed the Xbox 360, but you don't see that on the NVIDIA Shield Android TV ports. So yes, I suspect that the OS is getting in the way quite significantly here. And remember that the Switch doesn't run on Android, it uses NVIDIA's custom built API to get the most out of the Tegra X1 SoC, I think it's called NVN. May well be that if this emulator comes to the Switch, and I kind of think that if all of this effort has gone into making an emulator, it's not going to be left just for the Chinese market. I suspect that there may well be two forks of the emulator, one going to Android and the other via NVN for, for Switch, and I suspect that the latter, based on everything we've seen so far on Android with this chipset, well I suspect that the Switch version will be a lot, lot leaner and more powerful. Just my final point is that this really does look fantastic. It's probably the most exciting thing I've seen on the Shield for quite some time. So yeah, I mean, as a kind of taster of what possibly could be on the Switch, this is massively exciting. Yeah, it's sort of a testing bed for what could come down the line. Right, so I guess we'll wrap it up there. This is really uh, an early sample of uh, more coverage we're going to give to the NVIDIA Shield's Wii emulation. And we've got Zelda, Twilight Princess, New Super Mario Brothers, and Punch-Out, I believe, as well, uh, which we'll be covering in due course. Interesting to see how a 30 FPS cap will resolve uh, and if there'll be any frame pacing issues there uh, when it comes to Zelda. But uh, yeah, we'll get back to you on that. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me, Rich. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. And if you did enjoy enjoyed this video feel free to give us a like or subscribe and also to set up notifications how's that work rich can you explain yeah pretty simple here um, obviously there's a big issue with youtube at the moment where even if you subscribe to digital foundry you may not be showing our content so yeah just ring the bell there and you are good to go hopefully <laughs> fair enough as always, if you want to see the original source file to this, go to digitalfoundry.net. And if you want to get in contact with me or the team, you can contact us on Twitter. But from me and Rich, thanks for watching.